I believe that buy now, pay later is a financial nuclear weapon that unfortunately more and more people are moving to. I read this morning that Walmart has rolled out buy now, pay later. This is not good news, in my opinion. And it's going to lead to a a credit cycle that's pretty ugly, I think. What do you think, Anna? Absolutely. We're already in that pretty ugly credit cycle. So I think it's going to make it worse. But, you know, it's basically like a layaway. And I can tell you growing up in poverty, you know, my mom, I've shared a little bit before, but she worked two to three jobs at a time to take care of us to get out of, you know, a battered situation um, more times than once, unfortunately, because there is kind of a cycle to that, um, just as there's a cycle to poverty. And oftentimes when people don't have enough to make ends meet, they still want something to bring them glimmers of joy, glimmers of hope, and they just need stuff. And I can remember, Michael, us going to shop at Solo Serve was a big one at the time. And then, you know, some different retail stores where we would put things on layaway for school clothes, or if it Mm -hmm. was Christmas, my mom would start putting things on layaway. So basically you start making payments, they lay it away and you can't have it till you finish the payments. But we lived on, so I can remember so many times my mom getting a paycheck and having to run over to solo serve or whatever other store in order to make that layaway payment. So she wouldn't lose all the payments she had already Mm -hmm. made and then not have the stuff. And it's a real struggle for people and and layaway really to, even though it provides a way to buy things now and pay later, it really keeps poor people enslaved to stuff. And I know that because I've lived through poverty. I've worked with lots of inner city youth who live in poverty and poverty mentality because of the challenges of life. Um, when you do get any money, You go spend it on whatever you can that's going to bring you that little bit of pleasure and joy because you never know if you're going to have another paycheck tomorrow. And so this is just another way, similar to layaway keeping poor people poor, um, letting people charge things up, buy now, pay later. It's basically like a credit card Mm -hmm. and it's high interest rates, Michael. So you're buying something, you think you can afford it because- You don't have the money to afford it, but you think I can just buy it now. I'll pay it later. The economy is going to get better, right? So I'm going to have more wage growth, right? Like I've had. And so I might as well just pay later and I'll try to pay it off before the interest rate goes up. That doesn't usually happen. Most of the time people can't pay it off before the interest rates go up. And I don't know about the ones you're looking at, Michael, but the fine print often says if you don't pay it by this date, your entire purchase from the date of purchase until you pay it off now isn't going to be that nine nine you know nine point nine nine percent teaser rate. It's all going to be at twenty nine point nine nine percent. So mm-hmm. your you know hundred dollar pair of shoes, um, if you can even get a pair of shoes that cheap, is now going to become a three hundred dollar pair of shoes and yeah. keep you having to work longer to pay or take second or third jobs like so many people are today just to pay off your stuff. So it's horrible. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, it, it it even gets worse than that if it's possible. Uh, buy now, pay later doesn't show up in your credit profile, right? So it doesn't go to debt to income. It doesn't go any of this. I really do think buy now, pay later is is possibly the thing that kind of breaks the breaks the consumer, right? Because again, if you you look at the top twenty percent, they're fine, right? They're okay. But the the eight the bottom eighty percent, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, all the stuff that we've talked about for years, this buy now pay later is like a freaking hand grenade with the missing pin. Absolutely, and I mean, already sixty six percent, and there are statistics that go up to eighty percent depending on who's doing the surveys. But at least sixty six percent. This is formal government numbers of households are already living check to check to check, not a single dollar left to buy anything like making payments on buy now, pay later. And for those that have school loans that just started to have to be repaid, that they haven't had to pay for three years, give or take. 
this is just another thing on top of that. And, you know, school loans went away from the credit report as well for a while. So they couldn't report you negative or mm -hmm. behind on payments. Um, and so that kept some people's credit scores decent. And I look at lots and lots and lots of applications for tenants. And I can tell you that now that, you know, people have, if you look at what their, their payments are versus their income plus their rent, their payments because of all the credit card debt are already super high. Yeah. And that doesn't even count those student loans. So this is just going to stretch consumers even more. I mean, two thirds almost of, yeah, yeah almost two thirds of, of households already can't afford things. So, you know, our problem in America is that we are a debt society and people, the average person doesn't use debt productively like we do. They don't buy use debt to buy an asset that's going to create income. They buy, go into debt for stuff or for mm -hmm. vacations or things that aren't going to pay them. And the reality is most people do not pay off their credit cards quickly. They think they will, but then they can't. So when it comes down to utilities or rent or gas to get to work or your insurance costs that have gone up 50% in the last two years or more, um, they just never get around to it. So even though you said, and I'd be interested to read the fine print, Michael, that it doesn't go on your credit report. Usually these types of things in the past, like um, Ashley Furniture, for example, you could buy on, you know, if they give you a discount, if you finance it at, you know, 0% for a year. Well, it says, because I've done it, not because I needed to, but because I wanted the discount, right? And it says 0% for a year, but the fine print says if you miss a payment, because you're still making a payment on the principle of what you buy. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. miss a payment or you don't pay it off in that introductory period, the entire amount goes up a higher interest rate. And I believe that at that point, if you miss a payment, it's not on your credit report, but if you miss a payment, it will be. Yeah, at least I think that's, that's most exactly of what I've seen for these kind of programs. No, I, it would not shock me um, if that's exactly the case, right? If you perform, no harm, no foul. But it's right. this, it's really leaning towards it. This, this buy now, pay later to me is like, it's like trying to squeeze, you know, I don't know, something from a, a rock, right? A squeeze juice from a rock. It's just not there. And right. again, it does give consumers that dopamine hit. It allows them to buy that thing that they couldn't get any other way. It allows them to flex on social media or keep up with the Joneses or, you know, shoot, put yeah. food in the fridge for some people. And it's, um, I just don't know how it ends. I'm, it, I, oh, actually, I know how it ends. I guess I don't know when. It's going to end badly, I think. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, to your earlier point, it, it could take a while to kind of unfold. But it's just, I just get all kinds of, I'm just like, wow, why, why are we holding a hand grenade without the pen? Right. That's what, that's what and I what's crazy. I mean, it, it really is. It, it's a predatory practice. in in my opinion, again, um, you know, you have all these banks and these credit card companies that are already reporting massive increases in delinquencies and defaults yeah. and charge offs. So when that's already happening and you know, you're in a painful economy, um, they're offering it to you because they want you to keep spending. Exactly. You know, corporations, generally speaking, profits were declining, but then they went back up, at least amongst the top retailers. Corporate pro profits are at a record 9 to 10% annualized. Now, there is some weakening in that. And so as profits start to get squeezed and companies are missing their earnings beat, what do they do? Well, we'll roll out buy now, pay later, because we yeah. need you to keep spending, even though you as a consumer are squeezed, and to give you the carrot to keep spending so that we can keep our profits going, we can keep our, our people employed, we're going to dangle the carrot of you come here and spend your money rather than going anywhere else, and we'll let you pay it off later. So it you have to understand when you see these things, they're not your friend. They're not doing it for you. They're doing it to keep you spending in a weakening economy, and they're taking the risk that you don't default. They're hoping that if everybody can do these kind of things and the profits can stay just a little bit high, even if they start to get squeezed, that the, that will stay out of a recession and that that most people will pay. The reality is that it's significant, the increase of credit card defaults. So how they don't expect, you know, the consumer to have the same issue. I don't know. I would expect, I would suspect Michael, and I don't know this, this is just off the top of my head that a lot of these, um, 
stores, let's say Walmart, for example, aren't actually doing the financing. They're partnering with a predatory lending company, like a credit card company, for example, and they're putting the risk onto that company and just saying, hey, we'll give you this book of credit. You'll make this right. much an interest payment. So the default risk is on you, but let's partner together yep. um, and, and you know, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. So even the stores, I doubt they're actually taking the credit risk. They're passing it on to the credit companies that are willing to do it. No, it's it's. It's just I, I remember when a, when when companies came out years ago during the you know the the pandemic that this was the answer for everyone. I was like, this can't be well. I've done some math, I've done some presentations. It's just if you you, you buy now, pay later works great when the government's sending out stimmy checks and you know all of that stuff. That's not happening. And you know, we will have another recession. We may be in one, may one may be coming, but uh yeah. that is that is just gonna that th that's when the hand grenade goes off. It's just like <laughs> And here's the thing, just a little, you know, not to spend too much time on the economy here, but um, the debt ceiling expires at the end of this year. So if, if we have a recession this year, I can guarantee you there's going to be helicopter money. If mm. we have a recession next year, when we already have so much debt and there's a debt ceiling and you know, who knows who's going to be in office as the president or Congress, but I suspect there will be more gridlock just like there has been before. It'll probably get worse, not better. Um, they may have a harder time giving out money. So, you know, for those that are hoping for a recession to save you, you know, it it may or may not. But um, I doubt there's going to be significant stimulus money again unless there's a deep recession. And the sad thing is, if there is a deep recession, the average consumer that doesn't understand the economy they're going to go, oh, the government's giving us more money. It's going to mm. keep us booming just like it did after COVID. And they're just going to go buy more stuff. They're not going to pay down their buy now, pay later. That would be my, you know, my guess as to what a lot of people would end up doing. Of course. It's a cycle. I we, yeah, I think we've clearly learned uh, helicopter money is not, I don't know, respected. And thus it is spent freely on silly things. Now, of course, that's a, that's a generalized statement. I get it. People that watch this channel likely banked it or used it to pay off debt. But when you look at the general public, um, helicopter money is seen as free money and free money is not respected and it's just spent. And it's really funny. Absolutely. If you really yeah, and, and I, I've been looking at the data on this on spending to see, you know, clearly the economy is very bifurcated. You know, the top 80 um, percent of income belongs to the top 10 to 20 percent of income earners and mm -hmm. the bottom 80 percent, you know, have maybe 10 to 20 percent of the total incomes in in the country. But the reality is what I thought, Michael, and until I really dug into the financial data over this last six months or so, um, was that it must be the higher income earners that are really spending enough money to keep retail sales up and to keep spending going. But the reality is based on actual Fed data and surveying all the different you know regions is that the lowest income people are still spending the most money and the cohort between 25 and 34. So they're still eating out, you know, because mm. they don't have time to cook. Maybe they're working two or three jobs. So they're just going to fast food or, or whatnot. But it's the low income earners that are keeping on spending, but mm. they also have zero discretionary income and no savings. So what does that tell you? How are they spending, Michael? They're putting it on credit. So again, it's it's like it's predatory. Those that have a little more money have started to watch the signs. They've pulled back. They're generally not, you know, taking on tons of credit card debt. Although that 66% of households that live check to check includes most people that make $250,000 or more a year. And so, you know, or at least 250. So, you know, you have a spending problem and a no discretionary income problem like we've talked about on the show even up to that quarter million dollar mark, but the people that are still spending that can't afford it are doing it on credit cards. And so someone's going to have to pay the piper when the, when the music stops, they're going to be the ones that are hurt the most because they're racking up the most debt. That's just the reality. Oh, wow. Folks, if you're holding onto a hand grenade without the pen, I suggest throwing it far, far away from you. It doesn't end well if you hold on to it. Anna, where can they find you? Great. You can find me here every week, my playlist on your channel. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI mom. And for coaching and consulting, you can find me at AnnaKellyInvesting.com.
Thank you so much.